Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is G.I. Sanders from NTX Vinyl. I am uh, attempting to get our live stream going here. I think, think we're rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. Uh, thanks for tuning in. This is going to be a uh, little bit of an impromptu grading and pricing demonstration. Um, I've got a whole crate of records here. And we're going to go through them one by one. I'm going to look them up. I'm going to determine what they are, tell you about the condition of them, and tell you how I'm going to price them. And these are all going into our local NTX vinyl shop, so I'm not looking to uh, necessarily sell these to you right now, although that would be fantastic. But these are from, for our local shops. Um, we do have three locations in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. You can find information about that at ntxvinyl.com. And of course, if you're... Uh, not local to us, you can shop with us anytime at our website um, at ntxfinal.com as well. And um, follow us across social media if you're not subscribed here on the YouTube channel. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. So appreciate, uh, appreciate anybody who's tuning in live. And then also, obviously, if this is on demand, that's going to be great. So, um, so my point with this is to kind of pull back the curtain a little bit and just tell you about the process that I go through when I'm... Uh, kind of organizing, sorting, and then grading and pricing records. I'm going to show you how I clean them on the fly, um, how I look them up in Discogs uh, to kind of establish a baseline of value in regards to how I'm going to price them, and we'll take from there. So I'm just going to dive right in. Um, this is a pretty much uh, kind of standard crate of records, a lot of classic rock. There's maybe some R&B in here. Uh, I see a Willie Nelson, I see a Bob Marley. Um, Stones, Hendrix, Zeppelin, so you got some good stuff. We're going to start with the Queen record. This is Queen's uh, debut self-titled record. First and foremost, I've got a clean surface here, great on my desk. And uh, the first thing I do before I even get into uh, looking up a record is I usually give it a good wipe down. So um, cleaning solution, which is uh, nothing special. You can buy this just about anywhere, and a nice uh, micro microfiber cloth. So pretty much every LP, I'm going to give it a wipe down like this. Um, I'm going to kind of inspect it as I flip it over. And if you have any questions throughout this uh, in regards to if you're watching this live, feel free to tune in. This is a pretty clean looking record. I have a little light here that I put it under. So this is a strong copy. VG Plus for sure. Um, I'm going to pop over to Discogs. Now, there's a couple ways to look up a record. Um, if you go through the dead wax, which is the, the, the matrix numbers and the etchings right here, closest to the label, that'll usually get you close, closest, but a lot of times it's still not going to point you to the exact pressing, and I'll talk to you more about that as we go along. I'm putting in the matrix numbers just as an example here. It's a pretty long one, and it'll usually drill down, so in this case, Actually, one copy. And this, uh, and this one, that SP right there, so the catalog number, EKS 75064, that SP right there, which is not gonna, not gonna be easy for you to see, but that's a, that's a good tip off to look for a specific pressing. So on Discogs, I was able to locate the SP, SP pressing or the specialty pressing. It's from 1976. The jacket in this case is still in the shrink wrap. Corners are pretty nice. It's got a little wear on the edge here, um, but overall, a nice VG Plus copy. So, I use uh, clean outer sleeves for everything that we put in our shops. I actually use resealables, um, which are nice because it keeps dust out and keeps the tops of them from getting all uh, kind of worn out. So, there's our first record. Now, let's look it up. Queen, self-titled. So, I'm actually filling in my pricing labels here on my laptop, which I'll print, and then a price will go right here. So from 1976, so let's price this record. Again, strong BG Plus copy in shrink wrap. Um, the median value is 16 bucks. The low is two bucks. High is 38. So that's one barometer. I normally price somewhere around median. So my gut says this is probably a 15 or $20 copy. But let's see what else is for sale, at least on Discogs as another barometer. So if, I, if I'm looking at comparable copies in the VG Plus range, You've got stuff around $20, $25. So again, $15 to $20 bucks is a pretty good buy for Queen uh, self-titled in shrink wrap from 1976. So I'm going to do $20 on that. 
because it is a really nice copy. So there you go. Number one down. I'm going to set it over here right out of the way. Next record. Scorpions. Blackout. Let's talk about inner sleeve a little bit. You can see how this has the original inner sleeve, but it is completely split open. So I will definitely keep that as included because it's got the lyrics on it, obviously, but I'm gonna pull a fresh inner sleeve. And once I clean the record, this is another pretty nice, uh, pretty nice clean record here. So let me check this out. Scorpions. Blackout, uh, this is from 1982. So I pretty much go through this process that you're watching here on every single record. Give it a good wipe down. If it's extremely dirty um, and if it's got a little more value, I may run it through my ultrasonic cleaner, but in most cases, a nice wipe down is gonna do, do, uh, do the job. So I can pop in the, uh, if I don't do the dead wax, I can just do the uh, catalog number and that'll typically take me to where I be where I need to be um, to locate either the exact pressing or a very similar pressing. In this case, there's a little tip off. There's a 72 here underneath the uh, catalog number and that's a pretty good indicator if you're looking for the exact pressing. So as I'm drilling down here on Discogs, let's see if I can locate. I'm just gonna, I didn't use the dead wax on this one. That's fine, I can just filter Discogs by LP. That'll give me all of the, uh, the vinyl versus cassettes and all that type of stuff. And then I can filter down by country. I've got 24, now I can just look for that 72. So I found the 72, which is just an indicator of the specific pressing and the plants it came from. Slip that back in here. Nice, nice jacket. It's got a little corner wear. So probably a strong VG jacket to me. It's got a little staining down here. So strong VG jacket and a VG plus. LP. My gut says this is probably around a ten or fifteen dollar record in this condition. Um, let's see, medium is median value, so low of five, medium of eighteen, high of sixty, and again a high value on most records that you see. Um, that's usually like a sealed copy. Um, so if I drill in again, see what's for sale here, a comparable kind of strong VG VG plus copy. VG, you're probably going to be, yeah, 15 bucks. Absolutely. $15, good price on Scorpion's Blackout or Original, 1982. So I'm just pricing these as we go. If you have any questions, again, put them in the live chat. More than happy uh, to take those. All right. Blues Breakers. John Mayall with Eric Clapton. These are hard because they don't have years on them. These old London labels like Rolling Stones and stuff like that, you don't see... Uh, um, years on them, which don't even tell you if it's a, how early of a pressing. I mean, to use the dead wax on this one. I just know that with these London labels, you're much better off using the dead wax and you'll get a lot closer, faster. Just from dealing with a lot of records, I can tell you that. So, all right, Blues Breakers. This is, let's see, no year even defined on this exact pressing. It looks like it's from 77. Um, again, going to clean it up. It's a pretty nice one. This isn't a particularly like super valuable record, but it's definitely one I don't see a lot, and I definitely don't see it in really great condition, which this one is a very nice copy. So Blue London Stereo Label, nice VG Plus. Inner sleeve, I'm gonna talk, check out just to make sure. So if it's a, it's a clean inner sleeve, even though if it's a paper one, a vintage one, I don't replace that. I'll typically only replace an inner sleeve if it's torn, if it's all ratty, if it's stained, something like that. So this is a nice VG Plus copy. It's got a tiny bit of shelf wear, but nothing that would degrade it down to a uh, VG. So there you go, nice copy of Blues Breakers. Let's see where we're gonna price this out. So low five, Median 12 and high 20. So my gut says this is probably a 10, $10 record. Let's see, comparable pressing. VG plus 13, yeah. So we're gonna put this at 10 bucks, 1977, $10. John Mayall with Eric Clapton. All right, next up, love this record. Desire by Bob Dylan. Original inner sleeve and an insert. That tells me this is probably, yes, this is a, uh, 
an import version. It looks like maybe from Germany. And I could tell just because I'm not used to seeing an insert with this record. That was a tip off right away. Don't know if the US versions came with an insert. So this is a uh, CBS label. Typically this would be a red Columbia label if it was a US. Let's uh, see if we can drill in on what country this is from because it's not listed. I'm sorry, it is made in Holland. So I already know this is going to be a Holland pressing. Netherlands, I'm just going to put in, there's probably not that many versions of this one from Holland. A lot of times you put the country after the name, that'll help you drill in even further on Discogs, if you're, again, if you're not using the dead wax. So let's see, I'm just going to compare labels. Yep, made in Holland. Looks like this is from 1976. Don't often see uh, import versions of this one, so that's kind of cool. Got a low of three, a median of eight, and a high of 25. Now, import pressings are unique. First of all, this is a really clean record. I'm gonna go back in the inner sleeve here because the inner sleeve's nice. So if you're gonna, if you're a Dylan collector and you're like, man, I would really love to have an alternate kind of imported pressing, you gotta think about where you're getting it from. So there's a bunch of these for sale, 1976 Europe, but if I see what's actually for sale in the United States, because you're not gonna pay a bunch of shipping, there's actually only one of this available in the US for $32, which is a near mint copy. This one's not near mint, it's got a little, uh, little wear to it. It's actually got a tear on the jacket right there. I'm actually gonna use a little scotch tape because I don't want that to catch on a sleeve as someone pulls it in and out. So I'm gonna do a little, little repair job which if you use scotch tape and you press it down cleanly and it makes sure it doesn't bubble, that's a lot cleaner and it's just not gonna catch now. So probably a VG cover because of that little tear for sure. VG plus on the LP and it is nice that it comes with the insert. So even though there's only one available in the US of this specific 76 Holland pressing, um, I mean, I know my local customers and I sell a lot of Dylan. So I would probably, not probably, I will price this at 20 bucks because it is a 76 imported pressing. The near mint copy on Discogs again is going for 32 plus shipping. So if you're getting it shipped, you know, in the US, you're paying $37. 30, 1976 Holland pressing with insert. There you go, 20 bucks, that's a cool record, love, desire. All right, here's a fun one. Little sticky fingers. This one's got some issues though, I'm telling you right off the bat. First of all, let's check out the record. So the inner sleeve has seen better days. It's nice that it's there, but it is kind of torn on all sides. I'll still include it because it is iconic and it's a piece of this package for sure. Um, the record, it's got some wear on it. Let me pull out a clean inner and give it a little wipe down. It's hard to tell what a record looks like until you give it a good wipe down typically and put it under some good light. And it does take some elbow grease to kind of get in there and make sure you're seeing the real shine. It's not bad. It's got some marks, um, what I would call hair lines. Nothing that I think is going to drastically effect playback in regards to like skipping or anything like that just some surface noise so definitely kind of more of a vg yep so vg on the lp which i'm going to go ahead and look up and again i'm going to uh so i'll put in the dead wax on this one see how close we get there's a lot of pressing to this one uh let's see if i can find it here in the right light st rs st rs and is anyone there in the chat? I can't tell if anyone's in the chat. I think I tried to pull it up. C-71. It's an RI pressing. So the other thing to look at on the, the end of a lot of catalog numbers, again, like we had that SP on the uh, Queen. RI is another um, uh, indicator for pressing plant. So that's a good uh, good thing to look for. So I think I found this one. This is the RI Richmond. 
do you check DC warp? Yes, absolutely. So I do, none of these that thus far have I, have I felt. Great question in regards to warp. If I pull it out, you can usually tell if an LP's got a little bit of warp to it. So I haven't even had to check, but typically if you give it a, give it a line like that, or obviously when I'm wiping it, if there's any warp, you'll feel unbalanced. So again, that's why you use a nice sturdy flat surface, of course. So, all right, so we've got our sticky fingers. This is a 71 pressing again, VG on the LP. Now, the zipper is actually nice and intact. The buckle's coming off a little bit, and then you've got some, some kind of dirty shelf wear here on the edge, so not the cleanest jacket. And then you've got some staining on the back, so definitely a discount copy. They actually, uh, somebody actually opened it up. It looks like the glue, so definitely a discount copy of Sticky Fingers. I'm gonna put the uh, inner sleeve back in here. I mean, if this, if this record was in really clean VG Plus condition, it's probably a, you know, a $30 record easily. Um, the median's 30 actually, but given that this has got some significant wear and some staining on the back, oops, I forgot to put the record in there. I'm so used to putting the record behind, but when I put them in my uh, shops, I definitely want to put them inside the sleeve. So given that the jacket here is probably VG at best, more like a G plus because of the staining and the shelf wear, it's a clean, pretty clean VG record though so i'm gonna do uh 15 bucks on this just because the zipper's nice and intact and the lp is going to play clean so 15 dollars on a discount copy of sticky fingers all right how about led zeppelin 3 see what this looks like we've got the original atlantic sleeve which is in nice shape it is split open but to your point about checking for warp, nice flat record. This is another um, SP pressing. And, you know, I press a lot of records, so I don't look up a lot of them, honestly. I'm looking them up now, but I can tell you that based on the condition of this and the fact that it's uh, probably not a first pressing, but an early pressing, um, it's probably going to be about a $15, $20 copy of Led Zeppelin, but we will uh, double check and see how close I am. I'm going to uh, pop in the cat number and narrow it down. Again, I mentioned that was, this was an SP pressing. This is the gatefold with the uh, wheel, which looks to be very nice. So let's see, narrow it down to the Atlantic label. There we go. Perfect match. And a $27 median. This is a VG, uh, VG Plus on the vinyl. Really nice clean cover. You got a little corner wear. On this one, you want to check that the, uh, the wheel here is actually, uh, you know, still connected and working, which this one's really nice. Gatefold is nice. So nice copy. I'm going to keep the, uh, the Atlantic paper sleeve in here since that's the original. But since it's got splits on both sides, I'm going to put in. All right, so I'm going to say that's a, a very nice VG Plus copy. The, really, the only blemish here is a little bit of corner wear. It's nice. Um, let's see what comps go for. This is a 1970 pressing. So VG Plus on this. Uh, 35 bucks plus shipping is what Discogs is uh, telling me as far as comps are concerned. I would probably go 30 on this. Um, like I said, the median is 27. Led Zeppelin is definitely an artist that sells really well. People are always looking for really clean copies. So $30 on a clean original of Led Zeppelin 3, 1970, U.S. pressing. Everything's U.S. unless I mention it's an import. So I do do add. So like on that uh, Dylan, I added that it was a Holland pressing on the uh, on the price sticker. Next up, Axis Bold as Love. So here we go. I can tell right off the bat when I pick this up that the record may have some warp issues because of the way the jacket. But it could just be the jacket, and it is just the jacket. So the record lays perfectly flat. But there you go. It's just the cardboard, right? Don't know why that necessarily happens, but over time, it does. So the car, this is actually a really clean jacket. 
Um, let's check out the record once I give it a little wipe down. Yeah, the, the zipper on sticky fingers can be a little destructive. Can't hurt to be uh, cautious on that one. It'll definitely uh, put an indention in whatever records are around it. I don't worry about it too much when it's going into my shops because honestly, it'll sell within a day or two. It won't sit around long. Nice copy of Axis Bold as Love. Let's look this up. I'll, uh, I'll put the dead wax in here just to drill down. 30725. So I use the dead wax probably half of the time just because honestly, I'm to a point where I know what these records are valued at for the most part. And so I'm just getting close just to kind of confirm the year. Um, unless it's something I'm questionable on that I haven't seen a lot. So this is an interesting, uh, or this is a unique label in that it's all one color. Um, so there's a couple listed here that say tricolor, and that's this is not a tricolor, this is a single color repri reprise label. So let's see how close I get on a gatefold. That's a tricolor. So even though I put the dead wax in, it still just took me to uh, the main listing. So now I'm gonna drill down again. I'm drilling down, filtering by LP, filtering by country, which is US. And now I just gotta get, I know this is a little later reissue because uh, because it is not a tricolor. The tricolor labels are the earliest pressings, first and earliest pressings. So let's see if I can get a little closer here. So this is probably gonna be an early 70s if I had to guess. Yeah, found it here. Exact match on the label. So this is a 1972. Um, I don't believe it was even in an inner sleeve. Uh, I'm sorry, it was an inner sleeve. It's got the original inner sleeve in there, which, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. This is a really nice copy. So I'm gonna put it in a premium sleeve and slide that in there. Definitely VG plus on the vinyl. And again, other than that little um, warble on the jacket, but a nice clean cover. So really nice copy. Again, not a, not a first pressing of access, but an early 1972 reissue. Median is 22 on this. I would say I'm probably gonna go right around 20 to 25. Let's see what comps are. So comps in the US, yeah, so basically VG to VG plus starting around 15 to 17. So $20 on a 72, really clean. I'm happy to do that. 1972, 20 bucks on Jimmy. All right, see a couple questions. I noticed when I buy used records, Many record stores put the price tag on the record jacket and not the plastic outer sleeve, which many of them have. Just curious why this is the norm. I don't know, I can't stand that. Um, I, all of my prices go on the outer sleeve because I don't want to damage the covers. Obviously, I hate that. Sadly, there are people there that will chart, that will change the outer sleeve to a cheaper one. Now, this is definitely, uh, definitely don't skimp on that stuff. I mean, I find with, with records, you know, I try to veer on quality versus quantity. And um, I think the same can be said in regards to your inners and your outer sleeves. If you show people that you care about your records, then hopefully they'll care about them. Like that's my thought process. Uh, Whitney Houston, self-titled, still in the shrink wrap. Uh, still with the, uh, it's got a top new artist billboard hype sticker, which is cool. It's got a uh, original inner on the Arista label. Let me clean this one up. All right, nice and shiny LP. I see one little hairline. You're not gonna be able to see it there, but again, um, a hairline is typically something that's not gonna drastically affect play. You may not even hear it at all. It's usually just a visual kind of blemish. What you're looking for are more like feelers. If you can touch anything with your finger and feel it, well, you can bet the needle's gonna feel it then. This is a nice VG Plus copy with one tiny little hairline. Uh, actually, I think this may have a little, let me see. Yeah, it's got a little warp to, oh, it does have some warp to it. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but that is definitely going to throw off a needle on a turntable. So this one, I'm going to set aside because I'm going to flatten this. This is a perfect case of that amount of warp, which is like kind of minimal, but enough that it's going to throw off your record. I will run this through my record flattener and see if I can uh, get it to flatten out before I price that guy. All right, 
Next up, Grateful Dead, Wake of the Flood. I can tell by touching this because it's a really glossy jacket that this is gonna, this is an import pressing. Includes free limited edition poster. It does have a barcode, so that's a um, indicator right now this is gonna be a reissue as well as an import pressing. What's really cool is it actually has the poster with it. So let's check this out. Very, very cool poster. So that's a bonus right there. Uh, I flatten records uh, with a device called the Record Pie. Um, you can look them up. There's, a, there's one called the Vinyl Flat. There's one called the Record Pie. They cost a couple hundred bucks. Um, you know, if you're an avid collector and you buy a lot of, uh, a lot of used records, maybe worth it for you. But honestly, if I didn't own a record store, I probably wouldn't invest in it. I flatten tons and tons of records. So it makes sense from a business perspective. I'm not sure from a uh, personal collector's perspective, if you just run across records every now and then that need flattening, that's, that's a lot of expense. This is a really clean copy. Let's see what country this is from. Uh, not seeing it on the label. It's a very hard label to read. Let's punch in the dead wax and that'll drill us in. It's got some stamped dead wax. DMC-660. Dash B dash one. All right, it drilled us in. Probably Holland, UK, and Europe. 1989. Definitely a newer pressing than I would have anticipated. I thought it was going to be 80s. Nice VG Plus LP. Poster is a huge bonus with the uh, poster sticker. It's got a little bit of creasing on the jacket, but overall, really nice copy. I would, I would definitely say VG Plus copy. And again, since it's coming with the, uh, the poster, that's a huge bonus. So low of nine, median of 19, and a high of 53 on Discogs. Now, keep in mind, Discogs, like, I love Discogs. It's an amazing resource. Um, but you gotta, you gotta be careful. Again, I'm pricing for my local shops. I know my local customers. I know how much they're willing to pay for records in a lot of ways. So everything that I'm looking at on Discogs in regards to value, I'm taking it with a grain of salt because I, I need to um, double down on my experience with my local customers more so than what people pay online. So I'm always kind of walking that line. Now, this is an interesting one because there's not a single copy available in the United States at all. Um, there is one available in Iceland um, that's in uh, U.S. dollars, but it would cost you 44 plus 19, I'm sorry, 25 plus 19 dollars shipping. So this is a tough one to price because there's not really any comps. I could go to eBay and look and see if I might find this exact pressing. Again, a 1989 UK pressing with the poster of Wake of the Flood. So I'm going to go 20, 25 bucks on this, which I think is a good price for this unique of an album. You don't see an 89 UK pressing with poster all that often. 25 bucks on Wake of the Flood. Great album from the dead. All right, moving right along. How about some Beatles? We got the Help soundtrack. I'm going to show you a little bit of cleanup on this one. Nice flat record. This is on the orange capital label uh, I mean if you put the price tag on the outer sleeve it's easier to change instead of peeling the price tag off of course I don't do it but I heard it from sellers yeah so um, that's part of the reason why all of our uh, price tags have the names and years of the albums because you obviously don't want a customer just taking one album out switching it with another I think that's what you're kind of alluding to so we're always mindful of that this is a really clean copy of Help by the Beatles. Let me uh, drill in the year though. With the Beatles and with the Stones and artists like that that have tons of different pressings, I typically will try and just use the dead wax right away because it'll get me a lot closer. And there's just so many variations. H21 number three. All right, I put in the dead wax, it drilled down to three different pressings. Let's see if this, what this first one is. 1976 orange label, so I can match it visually, which is what I'm doing here on the screen. And that is the exact pressing I'm dealing with. So we got a uh, low of three, 
median of 12 and a high of 54. This is a VG Plus LP. So let's take a look at the jacket. Pretty nice gate fold. Now let's show you a trick. You see some of this ring wear here and it's got some discoloration. This doesn't work on every co cover, but if it's a, uh, it's, this has got a little bit of a gloss to it. You can take a magic eraser. These are magic eraser pads. So now watch this discolored area right here and this discolored area right here. You can take this magic eraser. If you get it a little bit wet sometimes, just barely, that can help as well. But depending on the cover, it works dry. And man, you can really clean up a record. So check out this wear down here at the bottom. Just normal shelf wear. You can take a magic eraser. Doesn't hurt the, hurt the cardboard. And man, it cleans up nice. You'd be amazed what this can do to a copy of the White Album. Again, it's got to be the right, the right texture of the cover. It doesn't work on every cover. So check out around here on the back, like this ring wear right up here up top. Look how nicely that goes away. So you can definitely get away with that. Now, does that mean I'm going to like price the record a whole bunch higher because of now it's a little cleaner cover? No, it just means it looks nice and I like treating records with care. So there you go. A little cleaner version of help. It does have a little bit of a seam split up here. I'm sorry. A, uh, let's actually look at this. I'll repair this as well. So you can see this has got a uh, split right there. When it's split like that, there's no real way to glue it unless you like are very, very particular with glue and with clamping. I'll actually use scotch tape on that. So I'll show you what I'll do. I'll tear off a piece of scotch tape that's just as long as that split. So I'm gonna uh, kind of look at the split. And again, the key with this is if you do it cleanly, it can look nice and almost go unnoticed. I'm not trying to trick anyone. I just wanna preserve that sleeve and you push it down really nicely. I'm gonna go open with it, push it. And then when you fold it over, you gotta pull really tight and get it pushed down. Again, a true labor of love here. So now, no split on that. So, cleaned up the cover a little bit, fixed that split, nice clean, kind of strong VG cover, and a VG Plus LP on help. And like I mentioned, the low of three, median of 12, high of 54. My gut says this is going to be about a $15 copy of Help, but I'll look up comps just because I've already got it pulled up. So first copy that comes up, VG, VG for 15. And then a VG plus, VG plus for 15. So right on what I would expect. Um, again, that's plus shipping on Discogs. So if you go buy this on Discogs, you're going to pay 20 to 22 after shipping. You know, in my local shops, you're going to have it in your hand. You can, uh, Look at condition for yourself. So 15 bucks on that one. All right, I see a couple questions, thank you. How careful do you have to be when cleaning records? Can they be damaged during the cleaning process? Absolutely, you gotta be very careful. I'll tell you one of the, uh, the ways that I have damaged records before, um, if I'm not careful. So it's a balance of going fast to try and get through these, but also being careful. When you put the album down here and you're cleaning it, and then you go to pick it up, you gotta be real careful because if your fingers slip and your fingernails go in or a fingernail slips on, you can definitely, you know, create a, uh, sometimes a non-feeler mark, but it, it'll create a mark. Good tip on the tape, absolutely. Yeah, ring wear, uh, man, I'm telling you, the Magic Erasers are great. Beatles albums are hard to look up in Discogs using the dead, dead wax, it's confusing which one is correct. You're absolutely right. right. Like I said, Beatles, Stones, ba bands that have entire catalogs with hundreds of pressings, it, it's a chore, you know? I just typically try and get really close because the price difference between all those different pressings is usually nominal to where I could spend 20 minutes looking up a specific pressing and if I would have gone back and just used the first one, it, the, the cost will be essentially the same, the price that I'm gonna put on it, so. 
For sleeve splits like that, I use good quality shipping tape cut to a thinner strip, of course. It lasts much longer than scotch tape and doesn't yellow or anything. Good tip. Appreciate that. All right. Next up, we got Willie Nelson, the troublemaker. Red Columbia label, really nice, clean record. I can tell you right off the bat, this is probably about a $10 Willie record. We're going to confirm that. Um, I will go ahead and I, I'm not going to use a dead wax on this because I don't believe I need to because again, I kind of know what this is going for. I will put us after the catalog number. So if I'm putting in catalog, which is KC 34, 112, and then I put us, that'll drill me down typically to the us version, which is from 1976, which is confirmed by the year. Nice, clean inner. This is also in shrink wrap. Has the uh, hype sticker on it, which is cool. Uh, low of one, medium of seven, and high of 36 on Willie. I'm in Texas. Willie is a great artist to stock in Texas. So I'm typically probably gonna put 10 bucks on this just like I thought. Yeah, VG plus, uh, let's see. Yeah, so keep in mind, all, there's a lot of VG to VG Plus copies that are in like five, seven dollar range. But again, then you got to add shipping and all that. So a ten dollar copy in the shrink wrap with the hype sticker, all day long in my local shops. And again, that's all I'm pricing. I'm not saying this is how any, anyone else should price. I'm saying this is how I price. So there you go, Willie Nelson. Um, wood glue. I, I so I don't use wood glue. I use, uh, if I'm gonna use glue for seam splits, I use Gorilla Glue, which is really, really amazing. And it is clear too. This is the uh, clear version. So I would recommend that. Next up, Stand by Sly and the Family Stone. Classic album. Let's see what we got here. Got the original, uh, original inner in here. Yellow Epic label, nice flat LP. This looks like an early, Definitely an early pressing, if not a first pressing of Sly. Pretty clean record. Let me see if there's any marks on this. Very, very light signs of play. So nice VG plus copy. Let's go ahead and uh, see if I can find the dead wax. It's got stamps, so I can put it in there. XSB. A lot of times too with the dead wax, You'll put in the dead wax and you'll realize, oh, that's just the catalog number. I didn't have to like squint and see all that. It's the same thing, you know? Uh, but in this case, the dead wax has a little, it has a few more characters. So Unipack pressing. So I'm gonna go back in the original sleeve of this, even though it's a little creased, I'm gonna flatten that out. A Unipack pressing. So this is the gate fold. And if it's Unipack, that means it goes in the inside here. Um, you'll see a lot of records like that from the late 60s, early 70s. That's known as a Unipack. Um, we've got a little bit of shelf wear, edge wear on the spine there. Oh, we've actually got a split on the other spine on the, on the far side of the Unipack. So definitely a VG jacket because of that split. VG plus on the LP. Um, we have got, this is a, uh, a 1969. Yep. Low of three bucks. Median of... 13 and a high of 75. This is probably a 10 to $15 copy would be my guess with a VG plus record. Let's see what we got here. Sly and the Family Stone, 1969. So if I look up comps um, in the uh, VG to VG plus range, these go from, it's kind of all over the board. Yeah, VG copies in 15 to 10. Yeah, I'm gonna go $15 on this. Sly and the Family Zone. 15 bucks, awesome. Keep rolling along. Um, I always go straight to the Dead Wax input for Discogs because I'm more interested in the information about the pressing, etc. Don't care about values, I'm just a personal collector. Regardless, a lot of times putting in the dead wax versus putting in the catalog number is going to take you to the same place. Um, it just depends on the album. And uh, 
depends on the uh, the label and a lot of things like that. So regardless of value, just to identify the correct record. Um, doesn't matter if uh, you're looking up value or not, if you're just trying to identify. Really clean copy of Bob Marley and the Whalers live record. Man, that's a beautiful, beautiful. Lays nice and flat. It's got the original black inner sleeve. Actually, this is a... Uh, this is the original, but it's split. So I'm going to go with the new, new inner. That's kind of a gut call whether I do that. Let's go. I would say this is this has got some wear on the jacket. So you got some corner wear, for sure. You've got a, a, a what looks like a previous sticker. So definitely VG on the cover, um, but not terrible, you know. Um, let's look up the record. I'm probably going to price this at about 10 bucks if I had to guess because of the cover. If the cover was cleaner. It would probably be more like a $15 record. Um, I'm just going to put in the cat number to get me close. Let's see where we're at here. Probably Terra Hot Pressing. Yep. Yep. Produced by the great Chris Blackwell. 1975 Bob Marley, median value of 11. Like I said, probably pricing right at 10 bucks, which for a vintage 76 Marley live record is a great pickup in my opinion. This one especially, this contains the, uh, the most famous live version of No Woman No Cry. Also, I Shot the Sheriff, Get Up, Stand Up. Great record from Bob Marley, 1975. 10 bucks. Again, if the cover was a little cleaner, I'd probably go 15 on that, but it's got a little creasing. All right. Um, here's something a little more modern. Beastie Boys. It's got a barcode on it. That would help me, but I'm using my phone up there so I can't scan it. Yeah, a lot of times when I'm pricing records, I'll have my phone too, because if it's got a barcode, I'll scan it. And that'll uh, not always take me to the exact pressing. Ooh. Okay. So there's good examples of some hairlines. Let's see if you can see that. You can see those hairlines there. Now that's the type of thing that, A, I'm gonna clean up, but I'm probably play test that just because this is a, uh, you know, in VG plus condition, this is an original pressing on Def Jam. And this would probably go for, you know, 30-ish dollars if I had to guess. But with those hairlines, I hate pricing a record that high that has that visual mark again i'm feeling it right now um because i'm gonna clean it again anyways and there's nothing i can feel but visually i can definitely see where that would put someone off so what i'll probably do is play test this one later on and if it plays well then i'll put a note on the price tag that says play tested that way when someone pulls it open and they see those hairlines and they're like oh man but maybe they will have confidence to purchase based on the note on the tag. So there you go. So far, CSNY. Unique promotional copy, not for sale sticker. Also a unique hype sticker, which is on the jacket. So I don't see those a lot. Now, let's see if it's an actual promotional copy or if that's just a sticker. It's just a sticker because this is a standard Atlantic label, no promotional which is not all that, all that uncommon, to be honest with you. Um, you know, labels would put stickers on stuff before it went to, uh, you know, DJs, record stores, things like that. It doesn't mean it was a white label promotional that came off the uh, pressing plant really early. It just means that they gave it away. And so they wanted to put a promo sticker on it. Now I'm going to check this one for warp. It's got a tiny, tiny little bit of... Uh, bold to it but nothing i think that's going to affect play playback and this is uh i'll go ahead and put it in i'm pretty sure this is a standard pressing but it's got ri which is the richmond plant i think that's what that stands for oh i must have missed the letter 74 317 missed a number one r i there we go. So I'll be curious to see if I can find anything. No, nah, it's just a standard pressing. So the fact that it's got that promo 
sticker on there and that hype sticker is kind of cool. Does it add a bunch of extra value? I don't know. To someone who collects unique stuff like that, maybe. Um, it is kind of neat to have that in your collection. But this is a $10 record all day long, I'm telling you. <laughs> Median's eight bucks. Nice clean copy, especially with that promo sticker. So, and I will make a notation of that, even though, uh, even though it's not specific to this pressing or anything. So 1974 with promo sticker, 10 bucks. Love that record. All right, moving right along. Let's see, what are those inner sleeves they're using? Good question. These uh, inner sleeves come from Vags Unlimited. Um, they're resealables. Um, I forget the exact number on them, but you can, you can shop Vags Unlimited. Okay, I can tell you from this copy of uh, Cosmos Factory that this is an import just because it's a really glossy, flimsy jacket, which is typically what comes from overseas. It does have the original inner, although it's got a little bit of tear on it. And here you go, made in England. There you go. Nice, clean, unique label for, uh, for Credence, for sure. I'm sorry, you were talking about the inner sleeves. Inner sleeves are Hudson Hi-Fi, Hudson Hi-Fi. You can get those in bulk as well. They sell them in packs of 100, I think, on Amazon. Uh, let me clean up this CCR. Probably going to do about maybe two or three more records. If you have any uh, questions and you're in the live chat, feel free to uh, chime in. Obviously, if you're watching this on demand, you can comment as well, and I'll try and follow up. I've never seen this label on a Credence record, I don't believe, because I don't see a lot of import Credence records. I see a lot of ones from the U.S. I'm using the Dead Wax on this one, 833. 88A-1 that did not get me very close at all. That showed me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different versions. Now I am seeing ones that say laminated. So let's see, yeah, 1970 UK. And that looks like an exact match. There you go, 1970 UK. Because the sleeve is kind of torn a little bit, I am gonna use one of these inners. So 1970 UK pressing, $3 low, 20 median, high of 120. Oh my God, someone really wanted that Credence record. Oh, here we go. So now we got a uh, split, right? I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do there. So this is where the, uh, the glue comes in. So Gorilla Glue, anything clear. Now a little bit goes a long way, but all you have to do, because this has an inner fold over here, right? This is made to be glued. You can see where the glue line is. It just dried up because this is so damn old. But if you take just a little bit, and again, just use it very sparingly, and put it right in the center of that little fold over thing, which is where the old glue line was, you'll have no problem. And then once, and I don't even have to wait for that to dry or anything. I can put the records, put the record and the sleeve back in very carefully, just make sure and slip it inside. I should've put the record in first. Let's see if I'm uh, talented enough to do this without getting the glue everywhere. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to slide that guy in. The other seam is nice. I'm going to slide the sleeve, the original inner in, without touching that glue. I should have put, put it in first, like I mentioned. But Okay, so now, still got that glue drying there, which should be fine. Perfect. Now when I go into the outer, that glue is gonna get pinched together. And as I sandwich it in between a couple other records, it'll dry nicely. Again, you don't wanna to use too much because then it could bleed out and then you're gonna get, you know, the outer sleeve's gonna to stick to it. But, all right, so let's see, uh, you just gotta use a little bit. 1970 UK pressing. Let's see if there's any of these available in the US. There are, there's four available in the US. Um, definitely a VG plus copy. Um, comps in the U.S. are from 20 to 30. Hmm. Yeah, I would do 20 on this. 1970 UK pressing. My gut says maybe 15 to 20. So I'm going to do 20 bucks just because I think the import pressings are cool. So there you go. Credence. 
Uh, I've seen another question here. Um, spin clean or ultrasonic? Hand clean. Um, but I do use an ultrasonic. I just don't have, there's no way I can use it on every record. Um, really like that glue idea for leaf splits like that. Thank you for that. I'd likely wait until the glue dries, but that's just me. It's going to dry the same in there in the sleeve as it is out here. I promise. Again, if you just use a tiny bit, if you put too much. Absolutely. Do you always save the original inners when you replace them? Even if it's just plain white or standard, um, if it's a plain white sleeve and it's completely generic and it's tore up, I'll throw it out and replace it. Um, if it has any printing on it, logos, you know, advertising, any type of lyrics, obviously, I definitely keep that. How do you feel about lower end ultrasonic cleaners? I feel great about them. I have a lower end ultrasonic cleaner. It's a Vivor, I believe, is the brand. And uh, it is uh, about 100 and, 100 and change, $130 or something like that. Cleans, only cleans three or four records at a time. The, the difference an ultrasonic cleaner makes versus just hand clean or a spin clean, which is the same thing as a hand clean, honestly, um, is drastically different. I have uh, been using the ultrasonic a ton lately on my personal records. And anything that's high end or questionable, I'll run through. Like I may end up running this Beastie Boys through the ultrasonic just to make sure. Um, but it makes a drastic difference in the playback quality. I promise you. All right, I got time for about two more records, two or three more, if you guys are hanging. Um, I haven't used the Humming, Humming Guru, but I've heard that one's a good one. Uh, Vinyl Sauce says there's a product for fixing record seam issues, but it, out there called Seams Easy, a bit pricey. I have looked at that and I have not found a place to be able to buy them and they are very expensive. So yeah, I, uh, I have looked into that though. Let's work on this Frank Zappa record. Shake your booty. This is an original 2LP. It's got a little bit of scuffing to it. I'm gonna do the dead wax on this. I know there's a ton of these Zappa pressings, so uh, might as well try and zero on in quick. SRZ-2-1501. C dash p r2 so just fyi i'm using the matrix numbers and the dead wax right there which you've got to get in the right light i have bright lights above me and i have another light right here that i can kind of put on that and you got to get the light pinpointed right at the right spot to be able to see it all right this is a 1979 so a good example generic sleeve but overall pretty clean so i'm definitely uh definitely fine to keep that let me go back in with that one. This is a double LP, again, from uh, 79. This is the auto-coupled. If you don't know what auto-couple means, that means that side one and four, or A and D, are gonna be on one record because of how record players used to work, the ones that you would stack. You would stack the records on top of each other, which means sides one and two would play, and then you flip it over and sides flip them both over and sides three and four would play. Nice, clean VG plus 2LP of Shake Your Booty from 1979. Now, the jacket, it's got a little, uh, definitely some shelf wear, some edge wear, and then you've got an old price sticker right here, right? So definitely more on the VG side as far as the cover's concerned. My gut says this is probably about a $15 record. Maybe $10 with that cover. 79, two LP, low is six, median 18, high is 40. But again, if I'm looking at kind of VG covers and VG plus LPs, there's one for 14 on Discogs. Um, but again, plus shipping. So I'm like, if someone wants to grab it off Discogs, it's gonna cost them 20, which means grab it in my local shop for fifth. 1979. So I'll tell you the reason why I decided to do this video is this is basically what you're looking at other than me narrating is exactly what I do every single day when I price records. So I figured why not just narrate it and knock a video out while I'm working. So I'm kind of cheating here. 
We're going to do one more record. We're going to do Fly By Night by Rush. If you have any questions, by all means, let me know in the chat. Or if you're watching this on demand and you have questions, reach out in the comments. Or you can always get in touch. Orders at ntxvinyl.com will reach us directly. We're going to do this one last, last Rush record, Fly By Night, which is an original 75. Nice flat LP. Let's look this one up. Uh, master disc. And we'll go ahead and do Dead Wax, but I believe it's probably the same as the uh, cat number. It's usually slightly different. 023-A-R. So I put in all the Dead Wax, and it did point me to a club edition. Let's see. Club edition. Let's see if there's a marker on the back. Usually you'll see Columbia House. Um, hmm, let's see. I'm not seeing... Might be on the actual disc label itself. Oh, see, it took me to a completely different club edition record, and this is not a club edition, I can tell. So let's see if I take off. This is probably just a standard 75 Rush Fly by Night. Let me see. I'm going to try one more version here. And again, with records that I'm familiar with like this, um, I'm just trying to get close. In a lot of cases, collectors don't even know or don't even care the exact minutia of the pressing. Again, if it's from 1975, there may be 10 different versions of this from 1975, and the only difference is they change the text and the font on the label just a little bit. It's all coming from the, you know, may come maybe from a different pressing plant, um, but by and large, all very, very similar from a price perspective because I'm just putting a year on it, and I'm, I'm not... Um, delineating on the price tag exactly which pressing plant and all that type of stuff i'll put in if there's anything specific but um, a little bit of edge wear here but overall a pretty nice vg copy of fly by the night by rush from 1975 low of 12 median of 42 hmm. high of 75 let's see copies around 15 to 20 bucks like, I think that 42 got real inflated, honestly. <laughs> like, this is not that expensive of a record. So, but I will go, I will go 25 bucks on that for sure. Original 1975 Rush Fly by the Night. So this is the type of inventory, the type of pricing that takes place on a daily basis here at NTX Vinyl. I hope you enjoyed the pricing and uh, grading and cleaning demonstration. It's definitely fun. Um, how do you feel about arranging a record collection based on how it is arranged in your Discogs inventory as opposed to alphabetical? How about anyone else out there? Uh, that's a good question. I do know there are lots of people who arrange it uh, with first name first. So like Bob Dylan is under B. That's, you know, I can't stand that. Bob Dylan goes under D for me, absolutely. Um, but there's a lot of people do because Discogs does it that way. Um, but I, I'm, all, I'm a last name guy for sure. Artist, artist name or last name, and I don't count the or A or anything like that. So... That's a little organization. Um, you're very welcome. Thanks for uh, tuning in. I will try and do this a little more often. Again, just my normal kind of process of what I'm doing. Um, nothing, uh, nothing uh, I don't think here completely unique. I'm sure other record store owners do similar uh, work when they're pricing records. And all I can tell you is just show you how I do it. And I would love your feedback, love your comments. Uh, hopefully this was helpful for anybody who uh, wants to learn how to look up records, determine what their value is, or just learn how to uh, learn how to catalog them and, and determine uh, the exact pressing, things like that in Discog. So thanks as always for watching. My name is G.I. Sanders. This has been another episode of Talking About Records, and we will see you again next time.